Hey, Jason, how you doing? I'm good. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm nervous too. We don't have Pat today, so um, we're, we're flying solo. I'm just looking at our levels, um, but yeah. I'll try not I'm to have a this. sip of tea. Welcome to uh, Jubilee Ball. Thanks, man. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. Okay, so we're going to talk about, I want to talk about two things today. The first one is uh, probably the main reason why people are here in this video, and that is uh, because we decided to make ranking men by penis size. Yes, we yeah. did. Uh, you're the CEO of our company. You approved that idea. I did. You were very passionate about <laughs> us doing this. Like the, uh, So we've been making ranking for a few years now, and this idea has come up as a joke right. like on our ideation sheets for a long time. Yep. Um, but this year we were like, hey, let's actually do it. Why? Yeah, it's weird to say that I'm like, I was the one who's passionate about the ranking penis size episode, but you know, on the face of it, it sounds like so ludicrous slash salacious slash like just clickbait. Yeah. And I think it definitely could be, but as I was thinking about what is the point of ranking, Mm -hmm. And this conversation around penises is, is that, I don't know about your experience, but for me growing up, it's not something that was talked about that much in our household. Like I have an older brother, my dad and I, we never had like the birds and the bees talk. We never had this conversation about anatomy, about sex ed. So everything I learned about sex honestly was like hearing word of mouth through my friends, through our own personal experiences, or like what you saw on the internet, like right. with porn or whatever, right? So, you know, I think probably something that every young boy or man thinks about at one given time is like, am I normal? Mm -hmm. <laughs> am I big? Am I small? What right. if I'm tiny? And I just didn't know because everything I had seen on the internet was like, you know, crazy, right? Yeah. Um, and oh, let me let me actually pause you. Um, I'm just curious, like, what age were you first exposed to like hypersexual imagery? Probably. Good question. I'm 35 now, so I, I do remember even when like this makes me sound so old, but I remember like AOL times when you had to like yeah. get on to dial up. But I think probably in middle school, like early middle school. So what like about, seventh grade, eighth grade. Yeah. What about yourself? Yeah, I um, it was similar. I think it was eighth grade. Um, I remember people telling me like. Oh, do you you know? Do you watch porn? Like keep my my yes. friends in school, yep. and I was like, Yeah, I do. I had no <laughs> no idea what it was, and I yeah. went to a Catholic school, okay. And I was like really into the values, and so like I, you know, I was Same. I believed in modesty, celibacy. Like I really um, was all about that, and so like I I remember it was as simple as like. What is porn? And I typed just the word porn, porn into, into, like Google into Google or Google. Ask Jeeves or something. Enter, and then my life was changed after that. Yeah, it's like um, suddenly you're doing like shooting up heroin, right? Like your brain can't compute that yeah. much. No, that's visual a, imagery. That's really accurate. Um, yeah, and, and we're like the first generation that sort of had that kind of that content at our fingertips in a way that like our parents probably didn't even understand we had access to yeah or yeah. they did and they didn't know how they felt about it and didn't yes. know how to talk about it yes um but that yeah that that's interesting so porn obviously depicts male genitalia yeah. <laughs> penises in, in a certain light i don't remember having the conscious thought of like where do i stand mm -hmm. um but yeah i like so when we chose to make this video like are you do you believe like the world would be healthier if we just advocated for like radical transparency around this kind of topic i think certainly more transparency i think we would benefit from hmm. I, I do think it's like an individual choice of like your comfort your values of like how much do you want to talk about it but right now i think what is happening in the world at least the way that i experienced it as a young man was almost the worst possible way, which is no one's talking about it. Mm -hmm. And the only instances where we do talk about it or see it is extremely um, unrealistic. unrealistic or like um, anecdotal or like um, 
you know, these are like huge outliers, let's say, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. both figuratively and literally. literally. And it's interesting. So like my experience with even like, I don't know, like, this is like a very, this is, I guess we're going to get into like some serious conversation, but like, <laughs> you kind of like, like when was the first time you saw another person's penis before? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've seen other, other men's penises before in real life, but for me, I was on the swim team in high school. Mm. And I remember this being like a very, like, a, I guess it was like a pivotal moment in some ways, because when you're on a swim team in our, in our high school, at least like everyone's just changing, everyone's just showering. That was one of the sports in high school that kind of had more of a sexual connotation. It yeah, was like the wrestlers and yeah. the swim team guys. Because, well, and you're like, you just have to like get in and out of your swimsuit yeah. and you're like, whatever, I'm tired. You just like swam for two and a half hours. Yeah, yeah. You're going to see other guys' penises, right? And I remember thinking... You know, I was Asian American. I grew up in Kansas, and there was like obviously all these stereotypes about like Asian Americans have smaller penises, blah blah blah. And you're like, oh, do I? I don't know. I've never seen it. I've seen porn, and you know, all those guys' penises are huge. So, being really self conscious about that, I remember <laughs> the very first day of swim practice, one of my buddies who was next to me, he like took off his pants, and I saw his penis, and it was humongous. It was like so big, and I was like, they were right. Oh, like no. I. Oh my that was God. the one that was your data set yeah it was like the first <laughs> other penis i'd ever seen aside from my i guess i don't even know if I've seen it, that i had seen i was like oh my god um maybe it's true like maybe like all everything that like all the stereotypes had been true and i was like so i don't know i was like oh okay very very self-conscious about it and then it wasn't until like later that week i you know you just like are in swim team and then you realize and as I was like get, gathering more data, seeing more penises, I realized, dude, this one guy was like a huge anomaly. Right, right. And actually, the case was that I like he was so confident. That was probably why he was the first guy who just. And to this day, it's like <laughs> it it's kind of shocking. We would joke on the swim team that he he was one of the fastest swimmers on the team, and we would say it was because he had an extra fin. It was like <laughs> that degree. So that was my experience, right? My experience was like, oh, okay, I had to learn over time purely by seeing a lot of other dudes who were friends or like on the swim team with me. I'm like, oh, you know what? There's obviously a huge range and spectrum, but the truth is that I didn't find any of the stereotypes that I'd heard about growing up to be that true. And then I was like, okay, this is the way I've actually mm -hmm. learned how to be comfortable with my body and you know, have my own confidence. And then later with sexual experiences, I, I became more comfortable, right? And then I was like, man, okay, if we could make a video that kind of at least unearthed some of that insecurity and like gave people different anecdotes, but also sizes and references to compare to, might this be a better way for us to like yeah. begin this conversation of understanding our own anatomy? Yeah. So. Well, and that's what I like. And I think at first I was like, we shouldn't do this. It's kind yes. of distasteful. Um, yeah. We'll see how it does on a monetization status. But And to be fair, there's a version of this that could be super distasteful, right? Right. And not right. valuable at all. And we're, we're going to watch. Um, we don't have a final cut, see, but we yeah. have like a rough cut um, that you and I are going to watch. And we'll see like what it, it sparks. But, you know, the more I thought about it, the more I realized, yes, we absolutely should do that. And, and this year we are kind of exploring the body more. Mm hmm but I think one thing that Jubilee's always been interested in is humanity. But we've always thought like a lot about the feelings and ideas. Yeah. And so it is kind of nice to bring it down to anatomy. Yeah. Because I had like a college professor who would always say like your organism when he was talking about your body mm. is a really pretentious way of saying it. Mm. But it's true. Like we're, we're, we're creatures. We only have one body. This, is, this houses ourselves. We all share that. Yeah. You know, it's universal. No human is detached from that reality. And then men especially can't run away from the reality of, you know, what's going on down there. And it's something that we can't choose, right? You can't unlike choose it. You can't really change it. As unlike... much as those toxic advertisements want to <laughs> want to capitalize on that, this is something you're kind of tethered to. But it's so weird that so much of um at least people's sexual performance or perceived manliness is attributed to something that is there's so little um no control over right? Right, right as an individual we don't have control over how big our penis is whether it's when it's flaccid or when it's um erect so it's so it's just become this thing that's like it's kind of run away on its own in my opinion but i'm curious yeah. for you real quick like what yeah. was your experience as it relates to like 
learning about your own anatomy, becoming comfortable. Yeah, no, I, I, for me, it's it's definitely different than yours. I didn't. I played basketball in high school. That was the only sport I played, and. For whatever reason, that wasn't a sport where it was like common to like get undressed, and <laughs> and it might have just been the facilities were so no, kind of I old. I feel like swimming and swimming yeah. is you have to. you have to yeah yeah. You're, I you mean, have to take a shower. And it's like, a rule. It's too difficult to just be hiding the whole time. You know? Yeah, but with basketball, it was like it wasn't something that uh, was thrust upon me as as sort of that I had to confront, and so it wasn't until I ha- I started having my first sexual experiences that mm. I started to get a gauge of that people thought about this but for me i kind of yeah to be honest i don't think i consciously remember like developing a narrative around it Mm -hmm. and it's really interesting to hear you talk about the stereotypes um given to asian men because you know i grew up in a white world Mm -hmm. um you know i'm a quarter filipino but like that's not hey, something that's even that. yeah <laughs> but it's not something that like like i wasn't seen as right, you know a right. filipino kid right and so it was a very homogenous environment and i didn't carry that charge of a stereotype so i didn't have that anxiety mm-hmm. and it does i mean i'm sorry that you had to like yeah carry that because it just shows how harmful they are but for me it was sort of like it wasn't until i got feedback from people from girls where it was like, oh, okay, I guess this is what stands. But it started to turn into, I think, like a um, an unnecessary dimension to see myself in. Mm. Because I think sex, especially when you're young and yes. you're, is so haphazard. Yes. And it's terrible. Often. Immature. Yeah. You don't know anything. And then you're kind of like getting this feedback. Oh, like, Maybe you have like a big penis and that means you're good at sex, but that has nothing right. to do with sex. Yeah. The correlation is like so low, whereas it's often, it felt like, it feels like sometimes actually if the folks who are just like, oh, I have a big penis and therefore I'm good at sex is probably, they're probably often the worst because they're like the least considerate about, oh, this is a activity that involves multiple people mm-hmm. and you have to be nuanced and like think about what might be good or bad for the, for your partner. Yeah. Well, it's it's for sure just a currency, and there's a reality there. Like anything that can be measured, yes, will, will be, be yes. and will be shared and used and leveraged. But I do wonder if we're just like more open about it. Like I, you know, and and we should watch the video. But like, there is a world where you can exist as a man with a small penis, a very mm-hmm. small penis, and still be wildly successful, very confident, and very sexually fulfilled. Um, and I think. It's good sometimes to maybe just like let the air, you know, yeah. like clear the air and just be like, you yeah, know, this is something we all we all think about. This is the range. This yeah. is where some characters might land. Yeah. And that's it. Like they, there's so much more, so many other dimensions to these people. Yeah. Yeah. I think once you become more honest, transparent with that, then it becomes less of the thing that you're like you're thinking about. Yeah. And you're like, wait a second, like me as a human as an organism like there's so many other attributes about me in addition to my penis that are part of who make me who i am right right um so yeah i'm i'm you know i haven't seen the episode yet but i'm <laughs> let's watch the beginning you just yeah? have to see okay I'm, I'm pretty nervous about this because i definitely i know what the criticism will be if we don't do a good enough job which is like jubilee you purport to create human connection and empathy why are you making clickbait content about penises so that's a valid question well, it's a tightrope that we i think are always walking no because we, yes. we need to address things that people are interested in and that we know are provocative yes provocation is important and i think that's just an important quality to art but at the same time we don't want to be exploiting something that we know will get a lot of views without bringing value to it. And provocation in and of itself with no purpose is worse, I think, than, yeah, it's worse. So people have heard now the intention of the video and why we want to make it. Oftentimes, sometimes actually execution doesn't meet the purpose, right? So that's sometimes, that's always, that can be disappointing too. Yeah, and I think we're willing to, 
to analyze that. And I, I think that's the purpose of why we're doing this. So let's see how you feel. Dude, we should have worn our uh, little robes oh. for this interview. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't have that much time to plan. <laughs> That's okay. Um, okay, so we can we can take off our headphones and just listen to it for a sec. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Great. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That's the moment of truth, my friend. Yeah. All right. You'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we felt like it was important to to do it on set, right? Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, casting this was incredibly difficult, right? Yeah. Because, of course, you've got people saying all sorts of things. And how do people even measure their penis? Yeah. I'm sure there's like a scientific question, but like I'm really happy that we had a, a, a nurse here. Well, also because there's so much stigma around it, we felt like we had to demonstrate to the audience that this was something being done in yes. almost like a scientific way and it's like mock scientific yeah at least in an objective way yes because you know the audience would otherwise say like how do we know these numbers are true yeah and obviously we would never show someone's penis in a youtube video well we have we can't we but cannot we have with uncensored sorry okay okay that's a good but point. i but it, uh, yeah yeah i see what you're saying so it was important though to show that this was happening on set, right, in right. my opinion, yeah. Okay. <laughs> or rounds. So, is everyone clear on what we're doing today? Uh, ranking dick sizes. <laughs> I think we all agreed. You have that look. Your eyes. You've got that. There's something about them. You look like a porn star, bro. So I'm gonna say that you're the biggest. I now who we think is the smallest. I don't know. You have a lot of confidence. Oh wait, no, no, the smallest. I was gonna say next biggest. So even though I'm black, don't think. That, that's just <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with it. Yeah, I'll put myself in the middle somewhere, you know? It's like there's... And you guys, you guys are taller. Like, for some reason, I think that tall dudes might be a little more packaged. Yeah. But what's the I shoe size? I'm yeah. small. Yeah. Oh, yeah. small. Yeah. I feel like you should this brings up, like, a lot of... Common there, questions, right? Or, yeah. Or ways that people try to gauge. I guess, like, a few myths that I'm curious if you agree with. Do you think that it affects men's confidence? And do you think physical size correlates to it? I think, I think it can affect your confidence. I mm -hmm. think if you're not, if you're, man, I don't want to make any judgments, but I feel like if you don't have a healthy relationship with your body, mm -hmm. whether it's your penis or anything else, it can certainly affect your confidence, right? Yeah. Like I had terrible skin for several years. I had like such bad confidence as a result. Um, during that time so I think it definitely can and you know this whole idea of like big dick energy like BDE like yeah. Pete Davidson we like he would have been amazing for this episode <laughs> so if you're watching please come um, we'll measure for you um, but I think that's a thing I, yeah I, I, I agree I, I think like you know knowing that it's such a charged thing um, men probably it, it affects their psychology it was interesting like right out of the gate Immediately, they identify the, the guy furthest to the right as a porn star. It's like we're all carrying around porn at the top of our minds. Mm -hmm. But then racial stereotypes, like it's like the second thing on the list. Yeah, he's like, I'm black, but don't think that for that reason. I mean, for you, when you first saw them. Oh, and then as it relates to like the other things like, yeah, hand Physical size, size yeah. shoe size. I don't know. I, I, I'm sure that there must be some, like, it makes sense to me. Like, these are all appendages, right? Yeah, so I, I, I imagine, I'm like, sure height correlates. But he's also the shortest guy furthest on the right, which is interesting. Like, they all, they identify him as, like, the porn star type. Yes. But he's also, well, he's not the shortest, but he's close to it. Which, just, like, right off the bat? Right off the bat, the no, guy. No, but for you, which guy are you, like, right off the bat, I think would be the biggest. You know, I think... And this is so arbitrary, right? If I'm being honest, I think I would... My mind, and that I think that shows how software of stereotypes runs. Is my mind would identify like, oh, the 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 black guy is the, probably the guy with the, the black guy with the hat. Yeah, Asher, who's awesome. Shout out to you, Asher. It's in a lot of our videos. Okay, you, you want to keep watching? You know, really quickly for me, for whatever reason, it's this guy like with this blue jacket, like the skinny guy. Just because of the the style choice. 
I've found that like <laughs> I don't know. I think that we often uh, okay. I have no idea. I guess I have no idea. There's no way to know. You just think he's carrying some BDE. I think so. Yeah, perhaps. And I I, I think that's what they agree on. Oh, actually, <laughs> Woo! they oscillate. I will say I have seen some little like smaller folks who are really packing. So I don't really don't know what to expect though. Man. But I think because y'all are a bit more bulkier, I think y'all might be a little bit more packing. Give me, give me, right give me a try. Give me a try. What okay. Number one. Sorry, don't get offended. <laughs> Dang. You come in. You go for. Number three, you go for like number that. two. I think he knows what he's you doing. You go for number four. Yeah. It's just based on energy. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> what, what, what makes you think like? What, what makes you think like yeah, what's your the bottom or where do you think you stand amongst the group? Me? Yeah. Where do you think you stand? I can't put myself there. So where do you think you stay? <laughs> okay. It's not up to me. It's up to you to decide. <laughs> I think you should just stay there. I'm fine. We should put further, further, further down. down. <laughs> 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 I think the two of you should switch at the very least, though. I mean, it's what you're going to see. Hey, take it. Take, take, take it. Take, 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 take the win. So I have a take question for you. Who do you think would be back? Because this we got to rank. The two that we have is the smallest, I would say, probably. They're low key, they're not talking a whole lot. I will say y'all two at least in the middle, because y'all have been more heavy. I don't think I belong at the other end, though. Well, damn, that's important. <laughs> Here, I'll take one for the team and go to this no, side, so that no one know. has to. Can, Can I, I switch with you? I mean, yeah. whatever you think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's good. It, do yeah. you have any input on this? I think I think I belong <laughs> maybe in the middle, to be honest. So I'm gonna slide between maybe y'all two, may, maybe after you actually. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> All right. Right. Everybody's a little self-conscious. <laughs> okay. All right, I think I we're mean, locked in. Mean, so that's their judgment based off of just purely by looks, their assumptions. Mm-hmm. For me, I agree with you. I think I probably would have put like taller guys further to the right because that would be my logic. I think it's interesting how the guy in the blue got pushed just put, to the sh- he oh, just go, he kind of volunteered. But that's something that's interesting about ranking, especially this episode is uh-huh. you know there is this this juggling of people's feelings and then also trying to be honest about observation. Yeah. And that's why this show has gotten interesting cuz when we first started making ranking, there was a lot of mixed feelings internally about like are we uncovering valuable truth? about humans in this format or are we just sort of like is it just is it is it going chaos in and terrible like uncomfortable yeah chaotic yeah. evil uh-huh, <laughs> is uh-huh. it our chaos chaotic uh-huh. evil format um but what i like is you know there's there's these cool dynamics where somebody is is sort of like putting themselves somewhere in the order because they're navigating the feelings or what they perceive to be the feelings of the group yeah. and what topic more than ever are you going to be sensing people's insecurities than male penis size? If you were on this stage, how do you think you would navigate the conversation? And where would you put yourself in this lineup? I, well, we'll see where the discussion goes. And since they were just going off of initial looks, looks yeah. for me, I think sometimes identifying a metric and just being like, this is sort of how, this is sort of the lens I'm looking at it through yeah. is a way to just be like, it's, this is nothing personal. And so for me, I probably would have just gone by height. I would have ranked them down the line by height. The tallest dude as the biggest. Mm-hmm. So this guy in the middle, I think his name's Giovanni. I would have put him furthest to the, the right. Yep. You know, David, I think his name's David in the red shirt after him. And I would have just gone down the line. Because that to me would make sense. What about yourself? How would you would, and you would just end up by height. And then. I would probably, yeah. Because for me, that would be like, okay, this is how we're going to like hack this uncomfortable situation. I think what this guy, who's the guy in the blue? Uh, um, I'm not sure what his name is, but furthest on the left? I think what he's done is really smart. Mm-hmm. So if you're not trying to be like, if you don't think that you can be accurate, I think what is really smart is to be perceived as smaller and later be bigger. It's a it's a psychological strategy. It's a psychological strategy. I think what is worse, and this is not the point of ranking, but right. this is just if this were me, I would not want to be standing at biggest and, and then slowly be brought down. I see. I would be wanting to be, I would be okay with people being like, oh yeah, you're the smallest. And then be like, actually, yeah. Um, this is just a random thought though I have. Yeah, well that is interesting because it's like what, how will, how will you save face when 
the dust settles. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm gonna keep. Quiet. Okay. Locked in. Shit looks good. <laughs> okay, perfect. I feel like that's a bad placement. I don't think you should be at, the, at the very well, end. Tanner, I'll just yeah. say uh, I can uh, suck my own. So I would say I don't belong. That might not make oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You might have to cut that out. <laughs> I got one. What's the longest relationship everyone's been in for only five years? Okay. What about you? Longest was like two and a half. All right. Mine was five years. What about that's you? That's an interesting Six question. Years. Yeah. That's an interesting question for Not sure. Not <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, it depends. What, what's the rationale behind that question, though? I have no idea. I think that there might be an implication of, like, you might be in a relationship longer if you're sexually well you can see it well let's or see both if, ways they yeah. might say it mm. it depends if you ask me or you ask my partner <laughs> <laughs> this guy's just a lot he's of question very marks. mercurial <laughs> oh is, i you see know, somebody's gonna lock it down with somebody who's got that consistent boyfriend you know what i mean define boyfriend dick. Oh. honestly gonna be on the smaller end yeah like the average yeah, yeah i see so because I've been in a relationship for five years, I got small dick. Okay. Just, you know, <laughs> 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 right, just like consistent, like, stable. Now that we've had him there for a minute, that's a little sus. It's, it's like, a good point. So let's be real here. He's in first place because we think he fucking. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know? Let's <laughs> ask him then. Are you fucking? <laughs> what do you mean? Do you get a lot of sex? Do you I, have sex a lot? I had the sex before I came to set. I had the there. sex yeah. before yeah. I came this what time. So he, he's for sure a porn star, well, I think. Well, five and a half is average for Americans. Yeah, I want to move you up. If you couldn't keep it up, and I'm still going to change between... Five and a half, 5.2. Yeah. Well, so here's... Wait, but you're definitely... Well, I, I disagree. I will say, just to add this little twig bit, I remember some years ago, there was a girl that I was really attracted to, and we ended up messing around, right? I was thinking, damn, if only I was there. Go for a second. This guy's hilarious. I hope he has the best. Ashley is the best. I just realized I can't handle everything. And I admit that. That's fair. I think that's wrong with No, that brings up, like, an interesting thing where, like, it's not really, if we're talking about through the lens of, like, the quality of your sex life. Hmm. I think that's something that's so important that's not brought to the conversation enough is the compatibility of bodies. I think it is more now, yeah. like in the sex positive world we live yeah. in. But like men and this whatever shape, size, orientation their penis is operating in, it like a lot of it, a lot of what pleasure they give their partner has to do with what type of body they have. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like there have been, you know, anecdotes I've heard of stories of guys who are like, I feel self-conscious or I'm nervous because I have my my penis is too big for my partner. Right, right. And it's painful. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, well, pain so, in sex is very common. Yeah. So then it's like, okay, what is there a better size? Is mm -hmm. bigger better? Not necessarily. It just depends on like kind of the alchemy between you and your partner in some ways. Yeah. So it's it's very true. Yeah. Asher, don't feel defeated. I like yeah, him. I think that he's going to Because of that honesty though. <laughs> he's gonna win ranking. I actually think he's gonna be bigger for that reason because he's so comfortable talking about his yeah shortcomings. Yeah, I'm usually I'm I'm proud. Well, Giovanni is just outing himself as somewhat. But were they proud? Yeah, no, both parties left happy. Nine times out of ten, both parties left happy. Um, so then to the question of just like does size matter? Well, as a gay man, I always say that I'm not a size queen. I'm a penile proportion queen. You can have a small but really pretty dick, right? And a big dick is just, can just be like a massive, gargantuan, honking thing, right? There's beauty in all pieces. Is what I like to say. He's the expert, right? He's probably seen the most penises of all of them. Actually, that makes me think of something interesting. We have like the three shortest guys as the, the most comfortable talking. Dicks. There's like a stereotype in the gay community that like small, like small skinny guys always have like a honk and thirsting because like they don't go to the gym, so all their energy and food goes to that instead. <laughs> okay, I have the same size penis since I'm fourth grade. 
what? Well, what? what? <laughs> Where are you going to put me now? What if he has a micro penis? What if we have, uh, we're ranking him as the biggest dick and he's got like a, a, a beautiful red. little one inch? Oh, 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 that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> There's beauty in all of it. Yes, yes. I like what he's bringing into this conversation about attractiveness. I don't know. Have you ever had a partner talk about uh, the attractiveness of your penis? Um, no. I mean, I maybe a little bit. Um, I mean, penises just in general are weird looking, yeah, they're, and I feel like that's agreed yeah. upon by. And maybe that's like a negative thing to be putting out. But for me, I it, think it's commonly thought they're they're unusual looking. There, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of little details to them. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, and every penis has, I think, a unique personality. Sure, yeah. That's a good way to put it. Um, yeah, I, I can't say I've reflected on this a, mu- a lot myself. Well, you said that you learned a lot about yourself through your partners. Is it because they would tell you... Uh, like oh about your size or about your like yeah. or did you ask would you have well, you ever asked a partner like I don't want to get too specific I've I think I probably land on the larger end okay. that's like the feedback that I've gotten um, but nothing like unusual yeah um, Wait, but should probably we call Katie? <laughs> don't say her name she's Sorry. gonna kill me uh, should we call out. your wife <laughs> <laughs> but so like that was always positive feedback that I got but to me. My, my journey with sex and sexual discovery is just, it's the relational element beyond that. Mm. It's like, how do you communicate to your partner in a way that makes sex better? Yeah. And then how do you just, how can you be present in your body and also get them present with you? Mm-hmm. And so I think when you're young and everything's about just like, oh, the size of my penis is directly correlates to the quality of my sex. You're missing out on this whole reality, which yes. is like, no, 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 no. Like the words you use, how you initiate sex, how you ground your partner. Right. If your partner has a, a history of, you know, any anything like where they're carrying a history that their body needs to be regulated. Yeah. Yeah. That has always been way more complex. And I've, I've learned, I've had to learn a lot more there. And so. Well, it's funny yeah. because it's like up until... I was sexually active, so much of my energy, I feel like a lot of young men's energy is thought about size. Mm -hmm. And what I found was once I was sexually active that it should have been inverse. Mm -hmm. So much more of my energy should have been spent and so much more of my current energy is spent on like EQ, on chemistry, on like initiating or even like foreplay or even and in the midst of it like obviously being attentive um which is all such big criteria for what i think is good sex or quality sex or like enjoyable sex um but it's certainly something that's missing in the conversation i think early on when it's just like you know you're 13 and you're like measuring your penis and you're like watching porn and you're like nervous or you're anxious or and you're it's that assumption that it's a light switch it's like, mm. I need to have the equipment that I need. Mm-hmm. That's going to determine how I'm perceived. And then sex is just a light switch. We're turning it on, we're having sex, and then it's off. Yeah. It's over and it's off. Right. And it's like, no, it's this landscape. And like, sometimes <laughs> you're like just climbing a hill. Sometimes you're climbing, you know, like right. a, a taller mountain and, and it's each, deeper and each faster. each experience and partner is very different. Oh, yeah, for sure. Right. Well, and that's another thing is when you're young, you usually are having sex like once, maybe. Mm. Well, because I wasn't in... It's not until you start to have a long-term relationship with somebody where you're having sex a lot over time that mm-hmm. you have the opportunity to just learn about sex. Yes. Because otherwise, it's just this like one and done. It's like we went to the midnight showing of this movie. We yep. saw it. We wrote our review. Yeah. And then you like don't care necessarily as much if yeah. in that state where you're like, well... I, I got what I wanted, which yeah. is like selfish, but it is like often the case early. When we grew up in a culture where it was even more like encouraged to have sex when you're drunk or like that's mm. how you would, that's that's sort of how you would um, like go about preparing for sex was I like see. going to the bar <laughs> yeah, and getting drunk. Yeah. So like I just, I think my initial experience is I was, you know, I, I, the total, it was a totally wrong framework. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Let's, let's, let's see where these guys are going with this. Well, yeah, I mean, did you hit puberty, like, fourth grade? No. 
I was a man. Sorry. I can't tell what Jesse's yeah, trying to do. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing yeah. either. He's just stirring the pot. I probably put you next to me. Next to you. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. You're switching up. And I think you should slack because you feel defeated, my friend. You're about to. Wait, I'm cool, man. I'm cool. Can you speak about the pictures to be bigger? Uh, personally, I don't have a face. Nah, I'm, nah. Yeah. I don't feel that. No. I don't feel yeah. that. I, 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 I didn't feel pressure until today. I <laughs> 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 got pressure. It's like just a lot, of, a lot of pressure to impress, and you know, even a personal pressure and a confidence boost. True. You know. Yeah, it's a societal thing. I mean, like, growing up, if there's not a lot of sex education in schools, so you learn a lot of stuff either from, like, porn or, like, other things like no. that. And yeah, basically, yeah, you shouldn't learn it. Yeah, that's, right. that's the goal of this of this video. But oh, nice, yes, sir. Good job. Well done. <laughs> that is the goal of this I'm video. From Israel, so it's very close-minded. We're not talking about sexuality or sex. So porn, and this is the number one mistake because porn is so comparing completely fake. It's yeah. very bad to compare yourself or look into porn to to see what to do, how to do. It should be around communication with your partner and yeah all penises are gorgeous the way they are mm. um, that's nice yeah, that's all right. penises are gorgeous <laughs> i actively look okay. forward yeah <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. put you next to me <laughs> hey, I'm like, what are you put you next to me <laughs> he's an acrobat over here you know what i mean <laughs> all right because of that i'm gonna go into third and i feel like you should be in second mm. what does everyone else do i work in it I'm a, I'm, I'm an inventor. <laughs> well, They're now like big, shortest to tallest. Is. <laughs> oh, I know, it's the inverse. <laughs> big, big risk. <laughs> I'm a nurse, so in all honesty, working in the hospital, you have to like clean them and everything. I've seen a lot of pieces. Everybody's about the same like size. Because you've seen so many dicks, where do you feel like you fall in the spectrum? Of pieces? <laughs> you don't see them erect, so technically, True. I can still be wrong. Hmm. But I would put myself maybe at like. A little bit like bigger than okay, but like, but like not, exactly I wouldn't say a lot. Yeah. What, so you so, said, what do we do? Like, what do the rest of you guys do? The I'm a chef. I own an escape room. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean an escape someone room. taking this ill. I don't mind taking it right now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's um, you know, I'm, I'm Asian. You know, I'm half Asian, so it's uh, it's understandable if you guys think something uh, about it. <laughs> but where where y'all want me? Just let me know now. Number three. I say three. 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 I think they're yeah, way three, off. Four. Number two. Or, well, I guess because no. does anyone feel like they like don't belong well. where they are? Yeah, I think I you're confident. Just, I, think I agree. The way that he responded, Giovanni. Yeah. I like that. That's look good. I think this. Yeah, I I like this. I like this. You're locking it in. Yeah, we're locking it in. Okay. Those guys on the left, I think, are too tall. Any questions before we get started? No. Let's do it. Yeah. Great. All right. Hands. Logan. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Thank you, Dr. Logan. Logan. That's the moment of truth, my friend. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Right. Sorry. I can't believe we. Did this. <laughs> I can't believe we did this. <laughs> Oh my gosh. This is so funny. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> he said awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am glad that we were so deliberate about like doing it off, collecting all the the relevant data. Yeah. We're gonna start with flaccid size. All right, moment so, of truth. Seven. I think that this was really important that we did actually because I think at one point we were talking about just doing erect. Right. And I think that there is a I don't know if it's a misconception, but like this idea, you know, like we all the grower versus the shower versus like, you know, all those things. I think that that was a really important part. So I'm curious, I'm hoping that there's very different rankings even between soft and hard and around, but. Yeah, we're three-dimensional bodies. So I, I think there's gonna be some variation, but my, I, 
I suspect that they got it pretty wrong. I agree. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I don't want to single people out, but I, I, I just think we're going to see a lot of movement. But my top choice actually was their top choice. So now I'm, I'm more happy than before. Hey, you want to be my be real right now? Sure. <laughs> Penis sizes. All right. Be real. Okay, that's going up. Andy? Sixth, Asher? Okay. Number two, Rocco. <laughs> Fifth, Baron. Fourth, Giovanni. Ooh, all right, come on. This is so. Third, Tanner. We knew this was coming. No. Huh. Second, David. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Jesse. I like how Wait, chill yeah, David's yeah, being yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that kind of makes sense too. Starting with Andy, you'll just say your... Uh, 2.5? Uh, 3.2? 3.5? 3. 4. Also 4. 4.5? Uh, 4.5. 4. Okay. I'm just, my man over here, I'm just highly impressed right now. <laughs> <laughs> Because he's tall, man. I was thinking. <laughs> All right, we're gonna move on to. What are we... Do we know what the average flaccid size is? Because we know the average rec size, right? They said five point two inches. Five point five. I don't know. To me, it's really imprecise. I mean, there's the whole Seinfeld episode. I haven't seen that. Where he's like, in, "I was in the pool. I was oh, in the right. pool." <laughs> but uh, to me, well, and that's I think an important thing about this part of the male body is I feel like it's always fluctuating. Oh yeah, if you're like cuz I, I feel like there are instances or... where like the body, you know, like fully it's <laughs> like trying to stay warm like fully <laughs> it's <got> turtle shell, <laughs> like, like fully goes back into the body. So it's it's a sensitive Yeah, for sure. Organism, for sure. Part of your organ. It's a, it's like a sponge, right? Yeah, yeah. Um I had heard and this is not scientific, but I had heard that Two thirds of men are sorry. One third of men are growers versus showers. Yeah, I have no. I've heard that term before, but for me, it's just like it doesn't even resonate. It's like there's five modes. It's oh, like, for, I see. Like every, I don't. I don't. For me, there are instances like where I'm like fully, um, like it would probably be like, like, <laughs> like so small. Right. Like you just like, came out that's of like gotta a freezing be like, pool. Like an inch, like uh, right. or even less. <laughs> like, like yeah, like a baby carrot. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure, for sure. That's true. And then, and then, okay, yeah, that's fair. I guess I'm curious if, if any of them, okay, I guess we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out here in a minute. What we're waiting for, in seventh, Andy. In sixth, Baron. Oh, all right. I told you. <laughs> in fifth, David. Ooh, I told you. Oh, wow. Fourth, Asher. And <laughs> In third, Giovanni. In second, Tanner. Oh. And in first, Tanner did have that quality, I guess. Yeah, yeah he has that personality. Yeah. I was wrong just about you. The rest was exactly Mr. Wow. So there, there must be something about being on a porn set that gave him that intuition. We are going to hand you a cucumber that is cut to your size. 4.8 is erect. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is the hard section. Can you hold it up? It's a beautiful penis. <laughs> Six. Oh, wow. Just for me. Um, Six. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Six point three. Nice and big. Little sword. Could you come with us? Sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Six point five. Wow. Damn. Seven. Oh my god. Look at I feel like this is what we're all waiting for. Eight. Wow. wow, that's big. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm happy. Yeah, 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 when we were casting that was difficult is just getting a full spectrum of sizes. I actually think we're probably still skewing higher. Oh, absolutely. If the, the average the middle should be is 5.2. The middle should be down here. Right. And I think what happened, and we, we talked about this as we were trying, as we were working with Mark trying to cast this, is the people who were submitting were obviously more oh, comfortable. Yeah. So the, the sample size of the casting options we had skewed even higher. Yeah. Um, I, there were, I, th I think I recall there were some men who we were considering who were even larger than Jesse. Yeah. Which to me, when, when that was like being discussed, I was like, man, that actually almost seems like a burden. Yeah. Like that, uh, that's like a significantly different reality. But for the most part, I'm pretty sure, you know, it's like this 4.86 range. I think that's a majority of men. Yeah, 5.2 being the average in America, then I think that that's right. So I think the one, this service is if we don't show examples in this like three to four range, then like yeah. you assume that this is the normal range. I want to call out that that's not the case, that some of this is, you know, casting and just the folks who are willing to be the, in our video. The seven men in this video do not accurate yes. quite accurately yes. represent the yeah. every man and but we're world. very very grateful that they came in for this yeah oh these are the, <laughs> these are some brave people yeah let's do a all right now i told them to keep this in because i felt like it was it was an interesting added dimension but they really sped through it pretty quickly but it, it doesn't looks, change that much. Oh, I guess David and Giovanni. D David and Giovanni go down. Or David goes up, but then. Yeah, it might not oh, be he goes necessary. Up. Well, they might have it in this video, but we could we could consider taking it out. No, I, I don't feel strongly either way. Well, that's the data. That's the data. Um, we can. I don't think there's a whole lot left here, but I, I'm curious about your. Yeah. Big dick is a curse as well. Don't forget it. It's not wrong. Yeah. We're talking about the boyfriend dick. So, our uh, microphone battery just died. So we're gonna we're gonna finish this voice memo style. Yeah. But I, I think that's a good idea. We should we should add the a marker where the national average is. Well, just yeah. To represent that. To, again, to the point of the video, it's like we want people to be able to learn and to feel. I don't want to say more confident necessarily, but feel less insecurity. And the last thing I would want is for a young guy to watch this and feel more... More insecure. More insecure. Because they're like, well, in the Jubilee video, right? the average was whatever, seven and a half, but if I'm at five, and actually, no, the average, it's just, you know, this is one example of a smaller sample size. Well, and I think what Jesse was saying, um, we just quickly heard it was, you know, the larger you are, um, impotence is is more of a barrier because it's mm. more blood flow that you have to get. So like a sometimes a men longer distance to travel too. Yeah, so sometimes that can actually affect uh, negatively affect your your sex life. Um, so how do you feel after watching it? I feel good. I'm happy we did it. I think um, I think it's gonna be. I I think probably, there's more. You're probably just a little loud. I think there's more in this conversation that I think we haven't uncovered. Yeah. So I think that there's room for a part two in some ways of like, I want to hear, I wish we could, I feel like we've scratched the surface. Right. And I think that there's a whole other conversation now about, yeah, more to the point of like, okay, let's get beyond just size, but how does this affect your sex life, insecurities, how does it affect the way you think about yourself, which I think is where the real meat of the value is. So, um, I think it's good. I think it's a good video. I think hopefully we'll do more. We'll find out what the world thinks That's true. Uh, in a few days because this is supposed to come out uh, in like three days or soon. Uh, yeah. So um, <laughs> thanks for talking about it with me. I guess I agree with you. Like I think my my takeaway would be like you you are your body, but you are also your mind. Mm. And I think more than anything, you're where how those two parts of yourself overlap. Yeah. And so like you can't change certain aspects about your body, 
some people are going to, like you said, you know, your skin's a certain way, the size of your penis is a certain way, the size of certain parts of your body are a certain way, and you can't really change that. Yep. And it's more like, how are you going to acknowledge that, be honest about who you are, and I think find joy, pleasure, fulfillment with that body that you have. Yeah, yeah. And, and confidence. Yeah, and I'm just glad that hopefully things like this will give more different angles or viewpoints into how people might learn about the landscape and yeah. about themselves rather than just porn, which I think can be very destructive in that in that journey for, for young people. So, yeah, more it's to come. A, it's a radical video. We'll see what happens. Let's go. But yeah, Let's go. Dude, thanks for taking the time. Of course. All right. Peace, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Let us know what other videos you want us to talk about. Um, if there's any changes to the format you, you would like us to make. But uh, yeah, our goal is to just uh, be an open book when it comes to how we think about videos and content at Jubilee. That's right. Make sure you also subscribe to Jubilee to tune in for more of these. And we can't wait to see you all again soon. All right. Bye. Bye.